Another key component of uh, virtualization, both in the, at the desktop and um, in the data center, is disk support. Now, different uh, virtualization platforms use different formats. Um, VirtualBox calls this a virtual disk image, or a VDI, not to be confused with virtual desktop infrastructure. So pay real close attention. When you see VDI, pay attention to what you're looking at, because there's a whole world of difference between a disk image and desktop infrastructure. Um, VMware uses what we call a VMDK. Um, Microsoft Virtual PC used uh, VHD files. Um, Hyper-V runs uses uh, VHDX. Um, so uh, pay attention to that. Um, you very well could see those on quizzes and tests and the like. Um, this is what it essentially looks like. You've got your um, virtual drive and your config file all those on a physical drive, say an old-fashioned parallel ATA, um, an old-fashioned IDE drive. This would be a really old system. Um, honestly, if you're running something, if you're running Windows Server 2016, there's a better than even chance that this physical drive is at least SATA, if not SCSI. But any, anyway, so you've got your VM. Actually, strike that. You know what? Back that up, because um, this is the VM. So you've got a physical drive. Um, you've got your server VM. It thinks it has a SCSI controller. It thinks that SCSI controller is talking to this virtual drive. But what tells the VM about SCSI controller and the virtual drive is your config file, which will also tell you um, how big your how much memory you have. So that's uh, desktop. Um, now the other way we can do this is with a, a NAS network attached storage. Um, so you've got your NAS array here. Uh, it may have a number of different SCSI devices in it um, with VMDKs on them, tied into a switch, tied into your computers, and there's a bunch of hypervisors, um, each of which has its own um, virtual server, its own virtual SCSI controller, its own virtual memory and hard drive, etc. All of this is running on uh, these drives down here. Uh, in terms of our workstation virtualization, usually that's going to be stowed on a, a sto stored on a local drive, whether it's IDE or uh, or SATA. Um, really, I honestly, the only I say IDE drives I can put my hands on right now are in my old bit box over there um, because I never let go of a hard drive. Um, I've got hard drives uh, left over from systems that I disassembled five years ago. Because they no longer booted, um, old Tandy an old Tandy clamshell. In point of fact, um, I've actually got a USB enclosure that I could use to plug those IDE drives in and try to recover the data. Except it's not big that big of a, of a um, priority for me. Data center virtualization, however, is most likely to not be on a single hard drive. There's a really good chance that data center virtualization involves a RAID array or a NAS or a SAN. Um, a SAN is a storage area network. A NAS is network attached storage. So if you've got a little box with a bunch of hard drives in it plugged into your network, that's a NAS, network attached storage. If you've got a whole sub, a whole, an entire network devoted to storage, that's a storage area network or SAN. And these VMs can live on the NAS or in the SAN that means it can move them between host computers. Say, for example, you've got a bunch of ESXi hosts, and one of them is start to, starts to get a little unstable on you. Um, because your ESXi hosts are using that common SAN for their storage, you can take that ESXi host down, um, actually use vMotion or something like it to push um, that VM from one host to another um, because they're, and because both because both hosts are talking to the same storage, it doesn't really matter uh, where they are. You take the one that is uh, getting uh, unstable on you, take it down, deal with it, bring it back up, move it back, or don't. Uh, we'll talk about vMotion later. Uh, in terms of our virtual disk size, we've, we've either got fis, fixed or dynamic. Um, a fixed size disk is what we call a thick provisioned disk. You, inc you basically give away all the space immediately. Um, and the hypervisor doesn't have to worry about allocating more space, claiming more space on the hard drive. It just basically has a huge file 
um, and it knows where all that space is to go uh, right away. With a dynamic disk, that saves you disk space, particularly in on the workstation. Say, for example, you've got um, enough VMs loaded on your workstation to take up uh, theoretically two terabytes of space, but you only have one terabyte hard drive. If you thin provision them and you're only using, say, 500 megabyte, 500 gigs or 250 gigs instead of all two terabytes, you're golden. Um, so a dynamic allocation, thin provisioning, works really well on, on the workstation. Does not work so well on the server, particularly if you need to uh, earmark all that storage so you don't accidentally run into overcommitment issues. Um, so, and um, I'll talk about saving our virtual machine state in just a minute. Uh, we'll get we'll get back to all this thin versus thick provisioning stuff in later chapters.